So uh, I've titled this um, Low Carb Christianity. Um, who's been on a low carb diet? I think I need to after Christmas. I kind of put on a few kilos there. Um, it's kind of quite a fad at the moment um, that we, uh, and there's a bit of medical evidence to say that it actually works to help you lose weight and to be healthier. But the question I want to ask you is, are you a low carb Christian? And we're going to explore this statement. Now, many years ago, over 25 years ago, I was a missionary in Tanzania, in East Africa, uh, where I was running a small bush hospital called St. Francis Hospital. Um, and it was very important because that's where Grace and I were, were married. Um, now, the language of Tanzania is Swahili. Now, probably a few of you can speak a bit of Swahili. No? If I was to try and complete this sentence, Hakuna Matata means... We got it over here, you were too slow over there. Hakuna Matata means no worries. So there, you have a, that's your basic Swahili. But there was a verse uh, where the translation into Swahili really caught me and really helped me to understand the concept of uh, this verse. And uh, this is the verse. Mimi ndimi ni chakula cha uzima. So let's try and learn that. Okay, we'll take it slowly. Does everyone respond? Mimi. Mimi, very good. Ndimi, now you have to go there. Ndimi, ndimi. Okay, everyone? Ndimi. Ndimi. Ni? Ni. Chakula. Chakula. Cha? Uzima. Okay, now all together. Mimi, ndimi, ni, chakula, cha, uzima. Very good. Who'd like to translate that for me? Okay, now Mimi, the, the, it's, it's kind of in the word itself. Mimi, me? close. I, I, ndimi. Am, Pauline, very good. Okay, so you've, we're doing a series on the I am statements. Ni, another short one. Ni, the, the, the. very good. Now we're going to skip Chakula. We're going to come back to Chakula. How about Cha? Of, someone's getting close. Uzima, life. Actually, uzim has got a very, it's a beautiful sense of completeness and fullness uh, of life. So, but what about chakula? Who'd like to have a go at chakula? Bread, you say? So, uh, now, Ruben, do you want to give us your translation of this? Now, because we talked about this a few weeks ago, I don't know if you remember that. I am the food of life. Now this is interesting because they, there is a word for bread in Swahili, it's mkate. But actually it was very hard to find bread. Um, sometimes we went to the big towns, the big cities, I could find a loaf of bread. A lot of my fellow missionaries would make their own bread, but it was actually hard to find the, even the bread flour there. I guess when you use the term chakula, it means the staple diet. Now, the staple diet uh, in Tanzania was ugali. Now, ugali is maize meal. So maize is kind of like corn. Um, it's a very starchy version of corn. 
Most people would have their own shamba, their own little field where they would grow their own uh, maize when the, when the rains came. They'd go and plant it and later they'd harvest it. They used to pound it out on these mortises and pestles um, at, into a flour. And then when it came time to cook that, they would mix it with some water, heat it up, and you'd end up with this kind of white, rubbery, Play-Doh-like uh, mound of, of, of ugali. Now, it kind of tasted like rubbery, Play-Doh-like. <laughs> it was very plain. It really didn't have much taste. It was you know, quite boring. You really needed to mix some sauces in. They had some favorite sauces, some kidney beans in coconut milk was called maharagwe. Uh, that was one of my favorites. Uh, they'd always have some greens, some mchicha. It was kind of like a spinach. Uh, if you were lucky, they might kill a chicken and you could have some chicken in a bit of curry and coconut sauce. Um, and that would be your meal. But the ugali, the maize meal would be the basic uh, food of the people. Okay. Who can give me a hand with this one? I'm trying to stand away from you. Oh, well, th that stand. Okay. Who's going to have a go? <laughs> okay, in Chinese? Can we do? Amy, how about you? Can you, can you uh, read that? Too far away. What about you, Rebecca? How's your, how's your Mandarin? No. <laughs> Travis also, okay. Um, no one's gonna give me a hand on this. This is the one I needed help with, actually. Uh, but what I can tell you, where's mum? Where's mum? Come on, mum. The food of life, isn't it? So, but is it bread or is it food? Food, okay. So. We have these translations. So uh, the Cantonese is sick learn, uh, which is also has the implication of the staple diet, the basic food of life. So we have chakula, which is ugali. We have bread, which was the basic staple of Palestine during the time of Jesus. That would have been their basic staple diet. We could also say, I am the rice of life. Now what they, these have in common is these are the staple diet, the carbohydrate. Bread is very... Exactly. So when we share the Lord's Supper, we share bread, don't we? But we could equally share ugali, or we could share rice. So, again, that's coming up rather small, but um, carbohydrates are the, the basic building blocks of life. Um, when we look at the food pyramid, we look at the base of the pyramid is the carbohydrate, where we're meant to take most of our energy from the carbohydrates, the breads, the rice, the cereal, and the grains. Jesus isn't saying, I am the champagne and caviar of life. I am the wagyu beef and lobster tail of life. I'm the haagen ice cream with a little chocolate sauce of life. Jesus is saying, I am your basic needs, your staple diet. Without me, you will go hungry. Without me, you'll be unhealthy. You will 
be spiritually malnourished. How many of you have um, fasted? Quite a lot of people, actually. Um, so we often go through that, that experience of fasting, like raising money or being aware of people who, who suffer. How did that feel when you were hungry? That you really wanted to eat? How does it feel when you're, you're weak? You have no energy. Cranky, <laughs> hangry. When we don't have our carbohydrates, our basic food, we become weakened, we become unhealthy, uh, we uh, become unwell. And that was very true in, in Tanzania, where hunger was a real problem. We went through periods of famine while I was there, where the rains failed or the locusts came and ate the harvest, that people uh, did not have enough maize meal, ugali, to eat. And they would become weakened, particularly the young ones would, would suffer and, uh, and, the, and become weak and be more susceptible to other diseases. I think also when we are spiritually malnourished, we are at risk of the influences of disease, of spiritual warfare, uh, and the, the world's, um, the way the world attacks us, we become very weak. There's a rule of uh, threes, that um, we can't live for more than three minutes without oxygen for three days without water, for three weeks without food. We need our basic, these are our basic needs for water, for food, for air to breathe. And thirst and hunger are very motivational. They're not like other senses like touch or taste or sight. Thirst and hunger urge you to do something. They, ur they you'll do, uh, people who are thirsty will take muddy pools from a creek and drink it because they are so thirsty. People who are out at sea will be forced to drink seawater uh, or tempted to drink seawater even though they know that will, uh, uh, that will harm them. <clears throat> People who are hungry will be desperate and that will be urgent to, uh, to gain food. Hunger and thirst are motivational. We read uh, from earlier in John's Gospel at the woman at the well. Um, Whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Thirst. In John 6, in this passage, we read, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not go, never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Hunger and thirst. Do you hunger and thirst for God's word? Are you motivated to read God's word? If we remember the setting of this, uh, of this verse, earlier in this chapter, John, had, uh, sorry, John describes Jesus feeding the 5,000, the five loaves and the two fishes. 5,000 followers gathered on a hill, um, and this was a miracle of the feeding. Later on in this chapter, uh, as Jesus goes off on his own and the disciples uh, go in their, their boat to go across the Sea of Galilee, 
uh, and they meet Jesus walking on the water, another miracle. When the crowd wakes up in the morning, they realize Jesus and the disciples have gone. They went searching for him. And this is how the, these verses uh, come to us. <clears throat> if we read, Very truly I tell you, you were looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Who came for Christmas lunch? A lot of you came for a Christmas lunch. How did you feel? Did you, did you have some lunch yourself? Probably a lot of you were helping out, I imagine. Did you have some lunch yourselves? Did you, I, I remember my Christmas lunch, which was back in Hong Kong with the, the family. Um, I felt, oh, I am so full. I don't think I'll ever eat again. Did, you, did any of you feel like that after your Christmas lunches? Thank you, uh, Paul. I'm not the only one then. <laughs> but you know, you wake up the next morning and think, oh, I'm feeling a bit hungry. I might go and see if I've got a bit of that, bit of leftover ham or turkey, make a sandwich. We are hungry again. The food that we have does not satisfy. And many people come to church. Uh, they certainly, we put on a, a, we have a food ministry here where people come to church uh, for the food. And it's a great ministry. It really relieves a need for people. But are they coming just because their stomachs are full? There's a concept in Chinese called rice Christians. People who convert because the church offers them food, offers them rice. But what we need to do is to direct them further on to the food that will uh, nourish them uh, so that they will not spoil and that it will endure and lead to eternal life. We need to give them the Word of God for their spiritual food. These were hard words because and, you know, our church has a, you know, a food ministry and we put a lot of effort into this. Uh, but many of the disciples felt that this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? And many of his disciples turned away. He had 5,000 people come to his, uh, when he fed the 5,000. How many of you are, have a Facebook page? Who's got the most followers? Anyone got 100 followers? Anyone got, <laughs> okay, 100, more than 100, 1,000? No? Woohoo. Nearly a thousand here. Anyone got five thousand followers? It's all the end. Now imagine you had five thousand followers. Do you want to keep them? You want to keep them following you? Jesus had five thousand people following him, and yet he said these harsh words to them: "That you were just following me because I you." Fed your, you had your fill. Isn't it better that you have life, eternal life? And do you know how many followers he had left after after this passage? Twelve. Just his disciples, and even one of those we know was going to betray him. And he asked the twelve, why, you know, why is it you are still here? And Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. <clears throat> but there are also words of encouragement in this passage. Uh, in verse 39 we read, 
This is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. Uh, so we can be reassured that if we follow Jesus, if we feed of him, that he will remain true to us, he will uh, remain with us, he will raise us up on that last day. So we've gone through Christmas and of course the next thing's New Year. What will be your New Year's resolution? I want to encourage you to feed of God daily so that you are spiritually healthy that you'll have the spiritual energy to fight off the spiritual and worldly demands that are attacking you. Jeff mentioned that you've just done the Bible in One Year program. It took. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. That's that's quite a um, you know quite an undertaking to do cover to cover the, the whole book of the Bible. But you can get. Um, but what Grace and I are going to do is we've got a. a a, a uh, commentary on the, the Psalms and we're going to work through the Psalms on a daily basis. You can get uh, um, reading guides uh, either from the bookstalls uh, or off online. There are some, a number of online programs that give you a daily verse. But to regularly read God's Word so that you remain spiritually healthy uh, and this is not a luxury this is not the champagne and caviar this is your staple need your basic needs so let's just uh, end in a word of prayer dear Heavenly Father we thank you that you give us our daily bread that you supply our physical needs but we also ask you, Lord, to supply our spiritual needs. Give us the strength that we uh, can dwell in you and dwell in your word so that we can learn of you, be like you, and be strong in a spiritual sense, that we may not be hungry and thirsty for your word, but that we may have our fill and that it will endure in us and that you and we rejoice in the promise that you will raise us up and be with you forever. Amen.